What's going on there, guys? We back with another one, and we got Air Reed's response to Stevie Bags. Now, Stevie Bags, he spoke on uh, Air Reed earlier today, and he just gave his, you know, gave his side of things, saying, you know, he donates, and he's an alum, and he's not about to let Shannon. I mean, he's not about to let Ed just come in and destroy something that he and so many others worked hard to build up, and. What makes this a little more personal is, as you know, those guys both played together for the Baltimore Ravens back in 2012. They were on the same NFL team. So whenever they were calling out the names of the other alums, it didn't bother them. But when he heard Stevie Baggs' name, he was like, what? No way. No way Stevie Baggs was up there. Not a woke brother like him. You know, and Aries' whole thing is that there needs to be change. And he was proactive. You know, you can't take that from him. But Stevie Baggs says he's done things too. And so they have conflicting views on everything but every you know he's tired of what the narrative they're trying to paint because i think one of the words that stevie badge used was like he's crazy or that he needs some help and people are going to be on the defensive every time you come like that and i don't think every's crazy i think he's passionate and i mean bags did say that he's too emotional but when kids is involved you got somebody who want to change the structure you know of the way things have been going you know you you don't have no change by just falling in line so i could see why ed reed took the stance he took and i could understand why stevie bags is trying to be kind of safe in, in this regard you know um he's not he's not willing to do what ed reed is doing right now and that's that's okay but ed reed um one thing Airy has to understand is when you take a stance like this, not many people are going to stand over there with you. You stepping out of line. And why well, I didn't even want to call it out of line because I can't say it's wrong. You stepping out of the norm and most people are just not comfortable over there where you at right now. Keep fighting, my brother. You know, with your motives being pure and everything, even if nothing else comes of this, you've brought light on everything. You know, everybody's paying attention right now. And so that's good enough for me, man. Uh, at this point now what we're gonna do about it going forward is the answer but let, let's check out what he had to say about Stevie Bass and I'll be back with my commentary why you afraid of cameras being around you afraid of cameras being around because you're gonna show the truth because people are gonna see what's really going on is that it is that is that the reason why is that the reason why Somebody talk to me. Because if I'm wrong, then I'll say I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm going to say that I am wrong. You understand? Was I wrong for cursing? Ah. In y'all mind, yes. In my mind, no. I was wrong for the professional unprofessionalism, but they needed to switch off the trees. So there, Airy acknowledges that maybe he could have handled things a little better. But at the same time, he's like, you know, I needed to shake things up a bit to bring attention to this. Because my players are telling me one thing and I have to do something that gets immediate reaction. And that he did. He got immediate reaction. Stevie Bags, the problem is, you know it, Stevie Bags. I'm better than this. You talking all that woke stuff, my man? You talking all that woke stuff, my man? Get out of here, bro. Yeah, Stevie Bags, get out of here, Stevie. You know me, Stevie Bags. You worked out with me. You know I'm about these kids. You talking all that woke stuff and these kids protesting? You should be protesting with them. They gave you pizza and a two-liter. You told me this shit. You told me this, Stevie. I'm better than this. Man, get out of here, man. This is a layup, son. I made it to the league. You ain't do shit in the league. Just because you made it there, yeah. Many others can make it there too. Many others, I made it from, from where I'm from, Stevie. I made it from a one-bedroom apartment. What are you talking about, bro? Get off here, man. Just let it go, bro. I'm better than this. Man, get out of here. I'm not lying, Stevie. I'm over there doing construction, my man. What are you talking about? I was over there doing construction, my man. What are you doing? Telling the kids to go back and play? Man, you're not woke. You're not woke, young man. 
Just because you lifting all the way, you acting just like you acting on TV. This ain't no act. Just because I'm crying and showing emotions and all that, I'm crying because the kids are protesting. They protesting, Stevie. What you think they protesting for, young man? Huh? What are they protesting for, Stevie? So as you can see right here, Ed Reed is visibly upset a little bit because Stevie Bass, like, he's crazy. He needs help. You know, somebody needs to help this dude. And Ed feels like that diminishes everything he was out there doing. And that could be backed up by some of the students. I mean, you saw the protest the other day and you saw them pointing to some fields that Ed Reed was changing right there on campus in real time. So, um... Just writing somebody off is crazy. I don't think that was the move because there's actual evidence of individuals who are non-biased showing the work that Ed has done. This man know me, man. I don't, I don't care if I'm making it any better. I don't care if they make, I'm making it any better. This is crazy. This is crazy, man. I don't have no reason to lie. I came to help. I went over there to help and coach football. You got to do all this to coach football. All I was trying to do is coach football. Just so happened, I do real estate and I know a couple people. I helped a couple people and they were trying to help me. Help these young people. That's all I was doing. Picking up trash, Stevie Bags. You can call me emotional all you want, Stevie. I am emotional. I'm emotional about these kids. You're acting, Stevie. You're acting, Stevie. I built a whole park in my neighborhood, Stevie, where they killing kids. I was emotional there. I cried there, Stevie. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Stevie? What are you doing, brother? Just because you're telling people you woke, y'all woke. We ain't black. Black is like black. It come from the root root word lack. You lack sense right now, man. Get your ass off here with that, Stevie. Get back out of here, man. Get out of here with that, Stevie Bags. Get out of here, Stevie Bags. You just want me to say your name so people can follow you, man. Get off here, man. I'll let you talking, bro. I'll let you talking, man. You ain't saying nothing. I'll let you been yelling. Now wake up, Stevie. Why the kids are protesting? Ask me that, Stevie. Ask me that, Stevie. Why are these kids protesting? This man said, for fault, for hope. For hope? When he sat there and told me, bro, you never believe. When I was in school, they used to give me a piece of the two leader. So they lying, Stevie? Huh, Stevie Bags? They lying? They lying, Stevie? Answer the question, Stevie Bags. My work speaks for itself. You lying to people. You leading our people the wrong way. What are you talking about, man? These kids are protesting. Why are they protesting, Stevie? You on a reality show, man. What you talking about? You making this a reality show. But I'm the one emotional. Get off here, Stevie Bags. What are you talking about, son? Show his video. Run the clip, please. Y'all got to wake up. Y'all got to wake up. But they protesting, Stevie. Where are you? You in the meeting with everybody else. Somebody said Stevie on steroids. I ain't got nothing to do with that one. I ain't putting you on my live. No. <laughs> I'm going to treat you like I treat all the rest of the trolls. See you later. Bye. What are you talking about? Putting you on my live? No. <laughs> For what? We didn't already talk last night. And I told you to, your, to told you while we was over the phone. You, just, you don't deserve to be on my live. No. Talking about saps. No, nah, man. Get out of here with that, man. You know what it is. And I know you. At least I thought I knew you, Stevie. At least I thought I knew you, Stevie. Get out of here, man. Let me come in on your live. For what? We talked last night. And I told you. You full of it. Yeah, the truth does hurt, don't it? Your school lying. You with them. 
You with the grown folk lying to the kids. Are you kidding me? What are you talking about, Stevie? So this is actually the first part where Ed actually lumps in uh, Stevie Bags with the rest of the administration and the corruption that's going on out around there. He, he puts them in the group of the people that he's saying is lying to the kids. And, I mean, the kids, you know, sometimes, yeah, they may want to just protest because it's the thing to do. It's lit right now. It's very popular. They know all the eyes is on it. But also... Uh, some of the kids talking about their scholarship money being withheld, these moldy conditions. Yeah, it got hit with two hurricanes, but man, it's almost like you might need to shut that down. If the if the university isn't habitable, then you probably shouldn't have people in there. I mean, I know you don't want to lose the money that, that all the tuition and everything um, would provide, but man... At, at some point, like I said, y'all going to end up with more lawsuits if people start getting sick or uh, say it like a, some kind of virus or something breaks out and everybody gets sick. I mean, you know, you you going to have to, you got the answer to that, man. So just make sure your stuff is habitable. I think Ed Reed is seeing this and knowing what he's sending his kids back to every night is just not acceptable. Stevie Bags is a lie, man. This man told me that they give him pizza and a two liter before a game. You understand? Bye, Stevie. Y'all go ahead and let Stevie get on out of here. See you later, bags. Put him in a bag. <laughs> Put him in a trash bag. He's a trash bag. He's a trash man. Straight up. You wonder why people like that don't make it where, where men do in the league? You wonder why you ain't make it? Because you out there with that bull, bro. Crazy, man. All that woke stuff. But when the kids protesting, where the woke go? How that makes sense, bro? Help me make that. Help me make sense out of that. You talking about the people need to fight. The people need your school protesting and instead of you go help the kids you go stand with the grown people the kids wrong you telling me the kids wrong you telling me the kids are wrong stevie that's what you telling me let me come on the live <laughs> just a minute ago people were saying hey don't get on the live and now he want to come <laughs> come on man this is a this is clown stuff, man. This ain't this is common sense stuff. Can y'all say layup? They underfunded because people don't want to give their funds to people who not doing the right thing with it, right? Because they're not doing the right thing with it, right? Get them up out of here, man. No need to be on my live. No need to be on my live. I'm good, man. Reggie Theus was lying. Reggie Theus is a dirtbag, and he lying. The man lying. There's no way he needs to be an AD and a head basketball coach. Why am I applying pressure? Because my kids are over there. Kids I know over there. Let me remove some people out of my life. See you later. Bye. Again, man, throughout this process, Ed Reed has been very consistent about his why, um, the kids, and these conditions that they're in. You know, he reiterates that time and time again. And I think at the core of everything else you're hearing, he keeps saying, don't miss the message. Don't miss the message. It's about making the, making things better for these kids. Uh no longer having an unacceptable be acceptable. You know, we got to have a nice place for these kids to go to school, nice place for them to eat, nice place for them to rest at night. You know, they said one of the kids came out and said they were serving raw food. And what world is that acceptable? You know, that that's, you know, that could kill somebody, you know, being the wrong, if it's the wrong thing, you know, that, that could put somebody down for good. 
And so anytime it's something of that level, yeah, it got to be spoke about. And it may be radical in the way that it comes out, but uh, it will put people on the clock and put people on notice at, at the very least. Since Reggie Thiers has been the AD and I've been there three weeks, not under contract because they invited me over there. I didn't sign anything. They was trying to get me to sign some BS. Oh, yeah. They was giving me BS contract, and then we started to work it out. And I was with it. That's part of negotiations. We gave y'all some BS, right? That's what y'all figured. It's part of negotiations. It goes back and forth with negotiations of a contract. So that's part of it. Y'all can get that. What are you talking about? You know, so we was working that part out. Y'all mad because of curse words? What? <laughs> Come on, man. The dudes still want to coach and help the kids. Like, I would go back. That's the crazy part. I'm willing to go back and coach it. You got to get Reggie Theus out of there because he's a joke. See, what y'all understand, what y'all need to understand is that I was the chief of staff for three years at the University of Miami. They got rid of uh, AD and a head coach when I was there, and I stayed there. So if you did your homework, you'd know he ain't about no bull. And I'm not the one who did the firing. I'm just there to help point out the BS. You asked me to bring a standard back. You asked me to help you with your standard, right? You asked me to help change. You asked me to be a partner. And when your partner started doing stuff without you because he didn't need you because you were never around, and you never answered his phone call or you never called him back, what else should I do? Okay, guys, so I'm going to stop the video right there. But Ed Reed is absolutely right. And you run into this a lot. You have someone come in, they tell you like, oh, man, yeah, you got complete control. I want you to do this, 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 and this. This is why we hired you. You, We know you're going to change the standard. We know what you're going to bring to the table, right? And then when it comes time to get things going, where you call to check, hey, is it okay if I do this? Is it okay if I do that? Should we do this? Oh, uh, hey, did you know this is messed up over here? What what should we do about it? You're not getting those calls, texts, emails answered. But your kids looking at you like, uh, coach, you know, have, have you talked to them about it? Because they feel like you're a voice, especially when you're someone like Ed Reed. They feel like, you know, on that campus, you kind of can't be bought. You don't play it in the league. You got your money. So your voice, you like, they he can't be penalized in the same way they can be he yeah they could go against him and he could still be fine whereas you know that could throw their whole livelihood off and their ability to get an education um so i i've seen that and i know that to be true just based on my dealings my little dealings and businesses here and there you know what i'm saying when you partner up with somebody it could be a great thing sometimes, but sometimes, man, it's predatory from one side. You know, they see what you bring to the table and they want you to bring the quality that they want you to bring. They don't want you to bring all of you because if you do that, then you might start stepping uh, into some uncharted territory where they don't want to go while the people at the bottom suffer. And I think that's what Ed Reed's whole point is. Regardless of how you feel about it, I really believe that's his intention behind all of everything that you've seen he wants things to be better for his kids out there on that football field on that campus i mean and, and let's face it, it is a problem was it howard university a year or two ago where everybody was outside in tents because the mold was so bad inside the dormitories or yeah i believe it was howard it was one of those universities up north one of those HBCUs where it was like that. And, you know, they were in over their head with funding. But, man, at some point, like, some of these places got to close down. If they're not able to to sustain themselves, um, 
Yeah, you can't just you can't just keep it open just to rake in whatever money you can while people suffer because they don't have many other options for education. I think um, that's a little predatory and if you're not going to give them a decent standard, I mean, downsize your campus, whatever you got to do, whatever you got to do, man, you got to do something uh, to make sure what you do have is quality. You, you can't try to keep everything you always had and you're not able to take care of it. Okay, you had two hurricanes. You ain't, you ain't really had the donors. Okay, so what do we do about it now? Because people are coming in, they're going to stay in these buildings do we tell families like no these buildings aren't habitable yet i'm pretty sure y'all still allowing them allowing the kids to come on in on the campus so when you do that that it's your fault past that point you can't talk about the hurricanes and everything if you're not sectioning that building off and, and making it where people can't stay in it and you're letting kids get accepted into the university and housing them in those buildings after natural disasters you know you got to let them know right up front hey this building is not able to take care of you we can't accommodate you right now but as soon as this is fixed you know we'll start allowing people to come stay in here so don't don't give me the hurricane thing if people don't know exactly what they're getting themselves into when they get on campus you know you still accept them still allowing them to stay there so that's my that would be my problem with that um Lying to the kids, Ed Reed has been consistent about that from the very beginning. Um, now, he did say something about his professionalism. He wishes that that's the one thing that he probably could have handled better. But at the same time, he's like, even with his professionalism, he probably wouldn't have got the message across as strong, which I do agree. Um, Coach Prime kept it under the wrap, so we kind of just thought, the whole time he was there, like the whole Jackson State experience was just cool and smooth until the end right there. Or he would throw little things out here or there, but Prime wouldn't lean into it. Ed Reed, Ed Reed leaned into it. And Prime, when he came on his live, he wasn't blown away by what he was saying. He was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we talked about that. We talked about that. It was like when Prime was hearing what he was saying, he wasn't so blown away by anything Ed Reed said that he couldn't believe it. Or that it seems like it was too far away from the experience he, you know, that he had at Jackson State. Now, Eddie George, he's been pretty quiet about it, man. And I'm pretty sure people are are thankful for that. But I, I just hope everything works out in the end. Ed Reed said he wants to come back and said he would still be willing to come back if they would have him back. But he just wouldn't go under Reggie Theus. So that relationship is not uh, repairable at this point and I, one thing I do wonder is would would Stevie Baggs take that job if he was offered it because he seems to be very passionate about his alma mater so would he take it and pick up where Ed Reed left off and try to run the program his way I don't know man but I think they really should look at look at Ed Reed again as a potential candidate in my opinion but I, I doubt they'll do that let me know what you think in the comments guys don't forget to like share and subscribe until next time peace